Hello and welcome to the show. Now, some of you may remember quite a while back, we did some Lucky Dip Racing on Forza 4, the way it worked. When you set a lobby to a specific class, as players joined the game would randomly assign them vehicles, and we went racing with these randomly assigned cars. Unfortunately, in later Forzas, that no longer worked, but I really wanted to have another go with this kind of randomised racing. So, I went on the internet, found a website that has a Forza 6 car list and a random function so I could assign random cars to each of the players and we would go racing see who could make the most out of their vehicles our first race we were using C-Class at Bathurst now to make things a little bit more interesting and a little bit more challenging the grid was set to reverse PI so in theory the slowest cars would be starting at the very front and there was a second roll-off delay now that might not sound too much between two vehicles but from first to last that's a whole 16 seconds which is a fair head start and let's not forget just because there is a it's only a 16 second time gap the car at the back has got a lot of vehicles to try and find a way past so it's going to lose time potentially in traffic and this was all hopefully going to make for an exciting race. This uh, Astra was uh, always likely to struggle a little bit off the line. Of course, the front-wheel drive cars will struggle slightly with their launch and would lose a position to the BMW M1. By the time we got to the second corner, the Audi was now keen to uh, have a look and try and find a way past, but the Astra's not going to make it easy, as the, <laughs> the Audi can't quite find a way past, and Bathurst is not necessarily the easiest of tracks to be doing the overtaking, especially around these very narrow, quite fast and dangerous corners. Of course, there was going to be interesting vehicles turning up in this race, most notably the Hot Wheels Bone Shaker, a uh, real handful through the corners. It is a rather interesting vehicle to drive as the Impreza would find a way past on the run down the hill. However, the Bone Shaker, with a lot of power and not much weight, is very, very fast in a straight line. It completely outclasses just about everything here in terms of straight line speed. And there are two lovely long straights here at uh, Bathurst. It comes soaring past. The Subaru is now chasing down a Porsche McCann would get to the outside. Unfortunately, the replay is being a little bit funny. No idea why in uh, this particular instance. Hot Wheels car thinking better of trying to go too wide. It's probably a wise decision on this uh, very, very opening lap. The Porsche Gets a very, very big slide as the Hot Wheels car makes the most of the acceleration around the outside. Subaru coming with him. The Buick doesn't stand a chance. We run down towards the final quarter. The Hot Wheels car to the inside. The Subaru moves up a place on the Porsche. The Astra's gone exploring on the grass on the outside there. Not such a good place to be. And the Bone Shaker will be up another position. Now, one of the cars that we were all fearing in this race, the Team Forza Nissan 350Z, of course. It is a slightly pre-modified car. It is at the very top of C-Class. So we had a good reason to fear this vehicle very, very quick through the corners. However, it was struggling in terms of its straight line speed. And with the two long straights here, it uh, did not have the greatest of opening laps. It was very much stuck towards the back of the field, trying to uh, pick up positions around the outside of the Impreza. That's an impressive overtake to hold the car around that particular corner but uh, yeah needed to move up through the order as quickly as possible and not get caught up too much in traffic and that was the real difficulty for the cars starting further back now I was driving the Infiniti the IPL this is the first time I've ever driven this car and there is a fair chance that uh, some of these vehicles would be the first time people have uh, have driven them or driven them in their, their stock guys and so on I was up to second place relatively low C-Class the PI of this Infiniti uh, the Mercedes 190e had held the lead for a couple of laps and while it was decent through the turns it was a very low C-Class I think it might have started on pole in fact and uh, yeah did not have the straight line speed to fight with my car however the pass had been done without either of us being slowed down too much and we were both hoping that we could run away quick enough as the cars further back wouldn't quite be able to uh, catch us later on a lotus elise well we know how good handling these vehicles are do have a tendency to be perhaps a little bit twitchy but uh, fantastically fast car through the corners 
but at a track like this, it was starting to struggle, gradually falling back, losing out to the BMW. The Subaru is now lining up. You can see how much speed the Lotus can take through the corners, but it just doesn't have the uh, the go that you get from the likes of the Impreza, as the Subaru would go straight around the outside, uh, get past the Lotus before they ever got to the corner. Yeah, the track perhaps not ideally suited to the to the at least the best they could but you can't really fend off the speed of some of these vehicles the bone shaker was very much on his march towards the front having passed the mercedes with ease down the back straight i was the next target for the crazy hot rod i was doing the best that i could and of course through the corners my infinity was pretty quick actually it was just about fending off the uh, the hot wheels car in terms of corner speed however <laughs> We're on a straight now, and that bone shaker is so stupendously fast. I had a fair margin back to him as we went around that first corner, but there is just nothing. Nothing that I can do against the speed of the bone shaker. Once more, though, neither of us were slowed down too much by that pass, and while I was going to stick close, just in case, I was going to you know, try and stay as close to the back of the bone shaker as I could, I'd rather be passed in that manner than have a long drawn out battle and be dropped back into the middle of the field. Of course, yes, there were going to be vehicles harder to drive in this category. The McCann was uh, not the fastest of vehicles. It would have a race long battle near enough with the Astra stuck behind the Vauxhall for a good number of laps trying to get brave. It's not quite where you want to be going. Both of them pushing their cars a little bit too hard. The Vauxhall ending up in the wall. The McCann would, uh, or both of them ending up in the wall. The Vauxhall ending up in the wall a little bit heavier. The McCann would get going quicker and would finally find a way past that Astra. At the front, unfortunately, that has to be an honorary victory for the Bone Shaker. While he was leading by a fair margin on this final lap, would lag out with a half a lap to go, which would leave my Infinity in first place. The Impreza and Nissan 350Z were coming towards the end. They ran out of time, though, to catch up to the IPL. The Nissan tried to go around the outside of the Subaru on the final corner, ended up having to do a little bit of rally cross. So the Nissan would end up in third. The Impreza taking second with my uh, Infinity managing to stay far enough ahead that they couldn't quite catch me before the end of the race. But yeah, the Bone Shaker was well clear of me, and if he hadn't lagged out, it would have been a fairly straightforward victory for the Hot Wheels vehicle. Further back, the closest of finishes. The other Subaru Impreza in the race hadn't quite uh, made as good a progress through the field. However, on the final lap, was determined to find a way past the Porsche McCann. A big dive at the chicane, but couldn't quite get the move completed. The McCann, not the most awful of cars to drive. Ignore the magic floating sign going on in the background. Again, more joys, a Forza replays. Subaru very, very tight on the final corner. McCann gets that little bit better run out of the turn. It's going to be a drag race towards the line, but the Porsche just not quite fast enough. The Impreza would take the position. Now, we did talk about people getting screwed over with their car choices, but none more so than Mercedes G-Wagon. Yeah, a very high PIC class car and absolutely awful. The driver in this one eventually giving up trying to get it to roll. That's, they're pretty close, but uh, yeah, not, not quite. And a long, long way back from the rest of the field. It's how it goes with uh, with Lucky Dip Racer. You can end up with something completely atrocious and, yeah, not be able to keep up with the field. For our second race, we would go up to B-Class and head to the Road Atlanta circuit. A Ferrari really struggling to get off the line, and you will notice, yes, that was indeed a Rolls-Royce that uh, you saw. It was cause for much amusement for us to see who would get screwed over most by the random car draw. And, yeah, a Rolls-Royce... Not quite the vehicle you want for uh, for racing. However, interesting selection of cars in this one. I've been given the Audi TT that uh, you see in the background trying to uh, chase this Lotus. Lots of classic race cars. This time out we see up ahead the Shelby Cobra Ferrari 250 GTO and Aston Martin DBR1 as well. The uh, Lotus carries a lot of speed on the run down the hill. Great pass to uh, get the move completed on that Shelby. That is not an easy place. It's a very quick place, especially when everybody's on cold tyres and might not quite know what their cars are going to be like to drive. A good pass to get done. The Lotus actually putting a lot of pressure on the Ferrari. Of course, 
the Elise is always going to be very, very quick through these corners and does a fantastic cutback, fairly easy pass really on the Ferrari and a big dive on the, uh, the rolls to get a position there as well. So we're going to be quick through the turns, but it's how much time would it lose when it came to these very, very long straights. Acceleration impressive on the Elise, but it's never going to have the top end speed of the likes of the rolls. That comes flying past, as does the Shelby. The Aston Martin, not as quick in a straight line as I was expecting. It actually gets a wheel slightly caught on the dirt that uh, causes some problems for the uh, car. It does gather it all back up. The Ferrari is uh, in there fighting his way back past the Lotus, although the Lotus could again carry so much more speed through this chicane than the Ferrari can. My Audi has come to join in the fun and the Elise would get to the inside of the Skyline as we head around that uh, final turn and make up another position back to trying to chase down that uh, giant Rolls-Royce. As I said, Classic race cars, there were a couple of uh, really rather fast ones in this race, keen to make their way forward, the Mercedes 300 SLR and the Maserati Birdcage, or the crazy bathtub as I like to call it. The <laughs> Maserati, an absolute handful through the corners, you can see how much of a handful it was. However, with huge amounts of power and very little in the way of weight, it might be going sideways through all of the corners, but it was monumentally fast whenever it came to any acceleration. So you can see how far the Mercedes has got away after that big slide from the birdcage, but it doesn't really matter. The Maserati's just got so much speed, it's going to reel the Mercedes back in, and the Mercedes is very, very quick as well. These are not slow cars that uh, are fighting it out. Maserati keen to get the move done on the Skyline as well, or behind them, you've got the Infinity and BMW M5, they're fighting for position. You can't waste time in these. You've got to try and get through the order uh, decent before the leaders get too far away. The birdcage would out accelerate the Skyline even with some big sliding. I was stuck behind the back of the Rolls-Royce. My Audi, actually not too bad of a car to drive, I didn't particularly mind the TT, a little bit understeery, but uh, yeah, it was okay. It was okay for me, but I was having a real tough time trying to get past the Rolls-Royce. My car was faster. The Rolls-Royce was, as you would imagine, an absolute handful around this track, and with the Rolls making a mistake coming down the uh, hill, I would move up a position. Problem was I could never keep the position. Every time, every time I would find a way past the Rolls Royce and then we would come around these top few corners to head on to the long straight and there the Audi would be murdered by everything and the cycle would begin again. I had a half decent sized gap to the Rolls and the Audi, you know, four wheel drive, an okay acceleration. But the Rolls Royce was just too fast, it would come flying back past again and I'd be out of range by the time we got to the braking zone at the chicane. It was quite infuriating, good fun race, but quite infuriating trying to find a way past, especially when we could see behind us, you know, you've got the bird cages coming, as was the Mercedes, and it wasn't going to be long before this group would join in. The Maserati, with its incredible straight line speed, would come flying up to the group. I had passed the passed the rolls and then lost the position again down this straight. The Maserati would come breezing past my Audi. The TT, pretty good under brakes, but uh, I couldn't quite squeeze up the inside of the birdcage. Even if I had done, it wouldn't really have mattered a massive slide from that Maserati, but it's still going to have the acceleration to pull away from my uh, TT as we round the final corner. It, uh, yeah, it, watching it from uh, from my perspective, it was clear to see how much of a handful the uh, birdcage was being through these corners. It was just sideways everywhere, but so incredibly fast whenever you did get the power down. The Mercedes now gets to the inside of the Ferrari to move up a position. Further back, unfortunately, a couple of the fast cars, BMW M5 and the Infiniti Concept, would both be involved in incidences and would drop themselves down the order. And that's one of the dangers. When you start, when you have these faster cars, you start further back. If something goes wrong, you can lose a lot of time and have far too much work to do. The M5 was very quick indeed and would make a move stick on an Audi to move up a position, but... Uh, yeah, one of the one of the hazards of of being further back, you could see a little battle group up ahead. The amount of time the BMW had lost, and it would be a lot of work for the BMW to try and catch up. 
we continued to fight. I continued to stare at the back of a Rolls Royce as faster cars would join and then bugger off in this battle. The Mercedes was now trying to pass the pair of us. But of course, the Rolls Royce is not exactly the easiest of cars to overtake, and I'm blocking the inside route here because I'm busy trying to fight my way past it as well. The Mercedes gets very, very much boxed in on the outside. Lexus comes to join in. The RCF goes to the inside to make it three wide as the Rolls Royce would peel away at the front of the group. We are three wide coming down this back straight, and I'm yet again here seeing all of the faster cars than me bugger off when we get to the straight and the Rolls Royce the speed of the Rolls Royce down this back straight was causing real problems for some of us in terms of trying to find a way past of it the Lexus again one of the higher PI cars in this uh, field was making his way forward but these battles were costing these cars a lot of time and Lexus having to try to go around the outside of the Mercedes is not quite going to be able to do that the Rolls Royce is uh, on the grass and uh, very very sideways through there Mercedes is to the inside Lexus is to the inside I think I might have bumped the Rolls Royce on our run into that uh, first quarter I get a mega run on the on the rolls but we know what's going to happen as soon as we get to the back straight second place there was an intriguing battle for second in the closing stages of the race the Shelby Cobra holding on to it being pressured all the way through the quarters much like I had with the rolls the Elise would sit there watching the back of the uh, Cobra all the way through the corners and then we come to this long straight and the Shelby would bugger off and build up a really big lead and then it'd be closed up through the course of the next lap and yeah in the end the Elise never able to find a way past but at the front, it would be the lowest PI car of the lot that would go on to take victory. The SVT Cobra Mustang would go on to win, having started from pole. It's only one PI into B class. It was incredibly fast, and while lap times were beaten by some of the cars further back, they just simply couldn't make their way through the field anywhere near quick enough to even get near to the Mustang. I had spent a race-long session looking at the back of the Rolls Royce. I had to throw it absolutely everything at it trying to get past. I was as close as I had ever been coming into this final chicane and I knew the Audi was going to be quick through this final corner but the Rolls is not easy to pass. I uh, He covers the inside. I try to get around the outside but it isn't going to be enough. The Rolls Royce in the end I think about seventh place he would take with uh, my Audi being behind. The M5 had caught up massively but run out of laps to do anything about it. Our final race, and we would head into A-Class to the Silverstone GP circuit. I had been given a Shelby GT500. Now, I was not too displeased with this. Of course, I do like my muscle cars. It was always likely to be a bit of a difficult car to, uh, to drive around here, as the CTS-V up ahead goes for a little bit of a run wide through that uh, corner. Not a fun place to be stuck out onto the grass. I would get past behind me. TVR Sagaris, a uh, rather quick car, that one, and the Mustang not really got an answer as the TVR goes to the inside. I try to brave it, can't, I can't make it stick. Now, the Shelby will have plenty of a straight line speed, but it is very heavy, doesn't handle amazingly well, and the brakes aren't fantastic. The TVR is not the easiest thing to drive either, but it is better handling than the Ford. Although we're both better off than the poor sod stuck with the Bentley. Yep, in this race, the most screwed over driver would have the Continental GT. Very low PI, a huge amount of weight. Yes, it has got a fair amount of power, but it is such a boat when it comes to the quarter. It was immediately plummeting through the order as the TVR is off racing. Now, further back, much as we had seen in the previous races, these early stages are rather frantic. For the faster cars, all keen to try and make their way up through the orders. Tesla in the midst here, big Audi estate car trying to hold on to position. The Tesla struggling with some understeer Jaguar would pounce, get the move done. And of course, when everyone is this close at the start of the race, that uh, mistake from the Tesla cost it two positions. When you've got a group of cars like this, you really can't afford to run wide because yeah a swarm of vehicles will want to get past the Tesla then coming under pressure from a couple of Mercedes supercars the Lexus LFA is uh, joining in when you're up into A class yeah you start getting some seriously fast machinery and uh, the Jaguar would come breezing past the uh, Audi the Bentley was dropping back incredibly quickly on this opening lap the Aston Martin would pass the Audi as well as they continue their march 
towards the uh, front of the field. Now, I mentioned the supercars, and uh, yeah, there were a couple of them in this field. The Lexus LFA was very, very noisily tried to make its way through the field. The McLaren uh, SLR was also about the SLS AMG, as you can see at the front of this train, was uh, passing the Jaguar and the CTSV. The Lexus, a little bit stuck on the outside, and this was, well, becoming a rather common theme with these very, very fast cars having to try and find a quick way to get through traffic. And when traffic is fighting amongst itself as well, that does make things difficult. The Jaguar is trying to find a way past the CTSV, but uh, can't quite... I think it does finally get it done at uh, that first, or what was the old first corner? I still call it first corner. I'm just used to the old Silverstone layout. Either way, the Lexus, using its uh, impressive straight line speed, would breeze past the CTSV, but all of this costing the Lexus time, while those of us at the front were enjoying a lot quieter a time. It was all whether we could pull far enough away while this group was still fighting. The SLR was uh, coming through the order here, the LFA out dragging the uh, Jaguar. Jaguar not quite having enough speed down this straight to do anything about that mighty Lexus. Speaking of us at the front, there were three of us making a little bit of a breakaway. The Sagaris would move himself up into the lead. The Auto Union was here in this group. Another car that we expected to uh, really struggle actually didn't do too badly. And uh, yeah, was holding on to second. My Shelby was uh, also you know, we've got a pretty sizable gap at this stage back to that huge group of squabbling cars and we were keen to make the most of it. I was trying my best to find a way past the auto union. Was uh, easier said than done though. The Shelby, <laughs> quite a handful through the corners as well, didn't have enough grip to simply go around the outside of the auto union. These two quite evenly matched in terms of speed and so on. A very odd battle. Of all of the battles we've had in, <laughs> in various fail race videos, this one here is perhaps one of the more bizarre, as I'm trying to find my way past a classic Grand Prix car with a modern muscle car, but uh, it was good fun. It was a good fun little, uh, little battle, and I just couldn't quite get a move done. You see the size of the gap the TVR can pull here. My Mustang is the quicker of the two cars, but you've got to try and find a way to get that move to stick around the outside of the Auto Union. I'm not quite quick enough to get the move done there and you know that's a third of a lap half a lap of time that uh, is is quite costly and another one of the cars the higher pi vehicles the uh, mercedes sl65 was uh, also trying to make his way up through the field behind the uh, slr there were many noisy mercedes as well in in this race we run down this uh, relatively short straight the amg black series car to the inside would manage to outbreak the slr it's uh, just a little bit of lock up from the slr couldn't quite do anything to fight back against this uh, sl and he would also be on the charge up towards the front having been now freed of the traffic you can see a relatively clear racetrack ahead these incredibly fast cars could run in peace and try and hunt us down and Hunters down, they did. The SLS and Lexus would remain close as they caught up to the back of the Auto Union. The SLS tried to go to the inside, not quite able to make it work. The LFA is going to make it three wide. It's not a particularly wide place to <laughs> fit three cars, especially not three cars as uh, vastly different as these lot in the end. The Auto Union, well, the SLS goes for a little bit of a, a Raikkonen line over there, but does get away with it and <laughs> come back on track. The Auto Union is just not quite fast enough to compete with these cars, and whereas I had struggled for a little while to find a way past, these vehicles so much significantly faster that uh, they could get the move done relatively quickly, but still a little bit costly for the LFA. The LFA, you can see, if a couple of quarters still stuck behind that uh, Auto Union and not able to make progress further back and the uh, Audi was locked in battle with a Ferrari FF. The Aston Martin Vanquish didn't have the greatest of times trying to cut through the, uh, the through the fields here. The Ferrari FF, relatively high PI in the FF, however, as often can be the way with, uh, with four-wheel drive cars, gets a little bit caught up behind the Audi. The Vanquish, very, very happy to... Uh, <laughs> to take that position away again. Spot an opportunity, uh, very much got to go for it. However, the Ferrari is still right there. Aston Martin looking to the outside. The Audi, though, going to defend that inside line. Of course, four-wheel drive in the Audi. will get it out of the corners nice and quickly. At the front, and victory would go to the TVR again. Relatively low PI for the TVR. Having got to the lead early on, was able to make the most of the clear track to run away at the front build an unassailable gap 
back to the onrushing Mercedes and Lexus. You might see them in the background. Uh, no, you don't, in fact. I was, I'm surprised. Uh, yeah, build a large enough gap that the Mercedes and Lexus were unable to catch up to the TVR in the closing stages. I would lose out. Uh, there they are. The, uh, I would lose out to the Lexus and the Mercedes. On the final lap, I was trying desperately to hold on to my uh, fourth position, but uh, I was under an awful, awful lot of threat from that AMG Black Series as it goes to the inside. I've just got no answer to it. I haven't got the I haven't got the grip to fight with the Mercedes. I tried to get myself to the inside on the final corner, make it awkward, but it's just too fast. The SL65 is just too quick for me. Nothing I can do about it. In the background, the Auto Union would just hold on to uh, stay ahead of the SLR behind. It uh, was a lot of fun, actually. We had an awful lot of fun in these in these races. It was quite interesting to see. The the first race at Bathurst with the C-Class cars, yeah, the high PI vehicles did pretty much work their way to the front. One more lap and the Subaru and the Nissan would have got past me. The Hot Wheels Bone Shaker should have won that race. However, in the latter races, didn't quite work as such. Bathurst, the, uh, the higher PI, not Bathurst, sorry, at Road Atlanta, the higher PI cars started making their way towards the front, ran out of laps. And the similar story at Silverstone. Trying to get through the the early the early traffic really held them back so much that uh, by the time they did get free, those of us that had started at the front and been running in clean air for quite a while, despite having much slower cars, were able to take victory. It was yeah, it was really rather entertaining, really good fun racing in these. I highly recommend you you get a little bit more awkward to set up than in the uh, the olden days of Forza Four, but uh, still very very good fun. However, that is going to be it from me. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.